Is Instagram making us sad? I investigate on this week's Views from the Couch. The saddest thing ever happened to me when I was scrolling through my Instagram feed the other day. I don't know if anyone else has gotten this message, but I was in bed in the dark a few nights ago, scrolling through Instagram like usual, and I came across this very sad message from Instagram. You're all caught up. You've seen all the new posts from the past 48 hours. The fact that even Instagram's like, dude, chill the F out. I was like, okay, I need to like reevaluate my Instagram habits. So it made me start thinking critically about Instagram and social media and the effects that it really truly does have on my mental health. Is Instagram making me depressed? Reasons why it just might be making me depressed. I feel guilty because I'm sitting there scrolling endlessly for like hours on end and I feel like I could be doing anything else. I could be working out. I could be unpacking this apartment because I still have unpacking to do. But instead, I'm in bed at like 1 a.m. scrolling through Instagram. Like, oh, how pathetic. <laughs> what? Another reason why it might be making me sad is because I'm constantly comparing myself to others. So Instagram is obviously a lot of my family, a lot of my friends, but it's also a lot of internet strangers who seem to be living like amazing, crazy, awesome lives where they're like on rooftop parties with friends and on constant vacations in the Caribbean. And I'm just like, sitting here going, wait a minute, shouldn't this be me? And I also feel like Instagram is what I've been calling my my app trifecta, where I open Instagram, I'll scroll a little bit on Instagram, then I'll close Instagram, I'll go to Twitter, I'll scroll a little bit on Twitter, I'll close Twitter, I'll check Facebook just to see if anything's happening on Facebook, close Facebook, and then I go right back to Instagram. And then it's like this vicious cycle, app trifecta that won't end. So I decided to dig around a little bit and look at different studies or research that looked into Instagram or other social media sites and how they can affect our mental health. And it was kind of horrifying. <laughs> According to a 2017 study published by the United Kingdom's Royal Society for Public Health, Instagram is the worst social media network for mental health and well-being, worse than YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. It's the worst. As Time Magazine reported on this study, while the photo-based platform got points for self-expression and self-identity, it was also associated with high levels of anxiety, depression, bullying, and FOMO. Fear of missing out. Okay, honestly, social media can be an incredibly powerful, positive thing in this world. It can connect marginalized communities, rally and galvanize support behind important causes. It can connect people around the world who maybe never would have been able to connect if it hadn't been for social media. So I'm not trying to be super critical of Instagram. I just think it's important for us to realize how it may be hurting us. So I decided to look up some tips on how I can better my relationship with Instagram so that I'm not getting that message saying, just close the app and go to bed, Robbie. <laughs> this is a good one. Turn off push notifications. I did this, I think a couple years ago and it honestly saved my life. It was really, really great. I know that a lot of people for work reasons or maybe personal reasons do have the notifications on and that they have to get notified for certain things. So like no judgment if you have to do it for your own personal reasons. But in general, if you can afford to not have Instagram notifications on, please turn it off. Oh, so-and-so from eighth grade liked your post from 2016. Like what? Turn it off, you don't need it. Ooh, this is another good one that I have not done. Mute or unfollow your hate follows. <laughs> and I think by hate follows, they're talking about people who you follow, but like you secretly can't stand the person, or like you, you secretly are like, oh, why is this person in my feed, but you can't unfollow them because you wanna know what's next. Oh my God, that's it. I'm gonna cleanse my Instagram list. I'm gonna go through and Marie Kondo every single person I follow. Does this person spark joy? Does this per person spark joy? Yes, that's on my to-do list this weekend, for real. This is another good one. Place or charge your phone in a different room when you don't need it. So I use my phone for an alarm clock, so I guess I do have it charged by my bed, which is probably not great, but throughout the day, I do charge it in different areas, and it's always next to me, which it shouldn't be. Why I should just be able to charge it and forget about it for a few minutes, right? That makes sense. This one's another good one, although I feel kind of like, oh, I don't know if I could do this, to be honest. Track your Instagram use by using Apple's activity reports, and then try to set goals and reduce your time that you spend on Instagram. This sounds great in theory, and it's probably a really good idea, but I'm too scared to even look. I don't even want to see how many hours I'm wasting on Instagram every day and every week, but it would be a great incentive for me to be like, okay, like, get out, I need to get out of here. <laughs> this last one I am totally about, 
follow friends that you have in real life, not just celebrities, not just influencers, to compare yourself to. This one makes a ton of sense to me because when I think about when I'm using Instagram, having the most fun on it and enjoying it, it's when I'm interacting with people that I've actually met in real life. But when it's just celebrities and influencers that I have no personal connection to whenever, uh, not that it's bad to follow them or that you should get rid of all of them, but they definitely spark less joy for me, that's for sure. So I'm actually gonna try these out. I'm really inspired to go through each one of these. Maybe not all of them, a few of them kind of terrify me, but I'm gonna try a few of them. And so on Friday's Week in Review video, I will report back on how it went. If you wanna do this Instagram challenge with me, tweet at me, comment below, let me know what you're gonna do. Also, let me know about what different tips you guys have. I'm sure this is something that a lot of people are like struggling with, they're trying to figure out like what are the best practices. I would love to hear it. Okay, that's all for me for this week, you guys. Until next time, stay calm and couch on.